the rapture of the church is imminent, whether you know some people like to think about it or not. It is imminent, it's coming, it will happen. It is my family. Welcome again to Direct TV, bringing to you the truth. Welcome, guys, to this special episode of my video again. And in today's video, I'm right here with the man of God by person of the highly esteemed Reverend Dr. Chris Oyakulume, DSC, DSC, DD. And in today's video, guys, or um, the program that is ongoing with a man of God, Reverend Dr. Chris, is your love word. And if you have not attended the day one, you need to rewatch it. All right. So in the day one of your love war, which started yesterday of 17th of April 2024, the man of God, Reverend Dr. Chris, actually shared some light on the rapture of the church. Oh my goodness, you got to listen to this. That's the more reason I bring this video to you. It's a long video, all right? It's a long video you are going to be listening to, but it is worth it so that you can actually, um, you know, prepare, all right, for the rapture of the church. This is no more a joke. This is not a joke. And in this first part of the video where you are going to be watching, and the man of God, Reverend Dr. Chris, is going to be talking about why has um, the rapture not happened yet? Why has Jesus not come yet? Why has it not happened yet? All right, because there are a lot of people that doesn't know the reason why rapture have not happened yet so in this first part of the video pastor will be talking about why the rapture have not happened yet so um immediately after this i'll be right back but for those of you coming newly to my channel kindly hit the subscribe button subscribe and if you ever like the video hit the like button like today's video guys watch this i'll be right back the rapture of the church is imminent whether you know some people like to think about it or not it is imminent it's coming it will happen why oh they they say it's, it, why hasn't why hasn't it happened all this time well what's going on well i'm gonna read to you what the bible says about what you're thinking second peter chapter three we're reading from verse one second peter chapter three this second epistle beloved I now write unto you in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets, and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing this, that they shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation <laughs> interesting I i'd like to read this to you from the tlb can you please open oh, the tlb you're gonna love how it works go to verse um verse three let's start from verse three tlb First, I want to remind you that in the last days, there will come scoffers who will do every wrong they can think of and laugh at the truth. This will be their line of argument. So Jesus promised to come back, did he? Then where is he? He'll never come. Why, as far back as anyone can remember, everything has remained exactly as it was since the first day of the creation. <laughs> See? Ignorant. So, I want you to go to verse 8. We'll read two verses there. Verse 8. And, but don't forget this, dear friends, that a day or a thousand years from now is like tomorrow to the Lord. <laughs> but I, I want you to read that. I want you to read that from the King James because um, remember, the Living Bible is not really... A, a, a translation it's paraphrased it's paraphrased so but beloved be not ignorant of this one thing that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day here's the translation and this is significant I told you before when he tells you in this way and gives gives you the same thing in reverse he's telling you that um these are no exaggerations or generic communications like just that's not what he's telling you he's telling you that 
a thousand years is telling you that in prophetic prophetic language a day is a thousand years a thousand years as one day and the way to know whether or not at such times when you read prophetic writing whether he's dealing with such an expression or not will be based on the context in the subject very important the context and the subject what is the subject what is the subject for example for example when he says as uh, that Jonah was in the belly of the fish okay and then he tells you that this Jesus said this would be like he being in the grave okay now we know that he was there three days now you can't you, you can't look at that and say would that mean something like three thousand you know would that mean something like three thousand of course couldn't be because Jonah for sure was not in the belly of the fish for three thousand years yes, you know, so you look at the subject, you look at the context, right? Okay, back to where we were. It says, but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing that, the, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years is one day. Look at verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness. But is long suffering to us, word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. This is remarkable. He says, the reason for the delay is not because God is really delaying, but because he is long suffering toward us. It's got to do with us, not himself. He is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Oh dear. How gracious the Lord is. Now go to verse 15. In account, he wants to account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. He just said it. You see it? He says, The Lord is long suffering to us words, not willing that any should perish. He re-emphasizes it in the 15th verse. In account, he says, account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. Even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given unto him, had written unto you. Next verse. This is remarkable. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in the which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. So he tells us about these things having to do with salvation, why the Lord hasn't come yet. It's got something to do with salvation. He delays because of salvation. And it tells us that Paul had written concerning these things. So I want to show you one of those things that Paul talked about that's consistent with what he just said. Romans chapter 11. Just for contextual analysis, I'd like us to read from verse um, 22. Behold therefore the goodness and severity of God on them which fell severity, but toward thee goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shall be cut off. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in. For God is able to graft them in again. Now remember, he's talking about the Jews and the Gentiles. Okay, the Jews on the one hand and the Gentiles on the other hand. 
Okay. Now look at verse 24. For if thou wert caught out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and would graft contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? Now, I don't want you to, you can read this for yourself later on. I, I, I'm just trying to get you into an area, okay? It's a long discussion. Better to start from verse 1 if you want to understand the details. But I'm just taking you into uh, a little area here that's um, dealing with what Paul, uh, what Peter just told us. Okay? And it's in verse 25. Look at this. For I would not, brethren, that ye, ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits. That blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles become in. Wow. Wow. So, the blind about salvation right now. That means as a nation, not individuals, because there are many individuals who are receiving salvation in Christ Jesus. Right from, right from the day of Pentecost, many began to believe. Don't forget. And in fact, all the apostles were Jews. So always remember that. So there's lots and lots of them. The Bible tells us in the book of Acts, multitudes turned to the Lord. Multitudes of men and women. Multitudes. But not as a nation. Not as a nation. The whole nation never did accept. But they will, the Bible says. RMA Family Day, you have it with the first part of the video. is getting hotter as the man of God, Pastor Chris, shares more light on you know, the, the subject of today, which is the rapture of the church. All right, so um, that was the first part of the video where the man of God spent time to talk about why, uh, why many people don't believe that the rapture will happen. All right, and he shows us from the scriptures, all right, that people will actually think that way, all right. So in the next part of the video you are going to be watching, Pastor is going to still talk on, um, you know, why, um, you know, the rapture has not happened yet. But we also share a lot of light concerning what is going to happen, all right, and the dangers. That is why I'm saying it again. You don't have to tell, you, tell, see, tell yourself, tell your children, tell your family members, tell your mom, your dad, everybody that they cannot stay here after the rapture of the church. So you need to prepare them so that they can all go through the rapture of the church. Nobody should actually stay. Nobody. So try as much as possible to make sure that you get this video to each and every, one, every of your family member so that they can listen and also align their life and prepare for the rapture of the church because this is no joke, alright? Don't just watch it as any other video. If you watch it and finish, share it, let others get to know and prepare themselves for the rapture of the church, guys. Alright, so um, let's listen to the next part of the video, guys, and I'll be right back to share with you what has equally blessed me in today's video. Don't forget, if this is your first time on my channel, hit the like button like. And if you have not subscribed, please subscribe. Watch this. I'll be right back. But, uh, look at that. He says, blindness in parts. So it's not total blindness. It's in parts. That's what I mean. So many don't believe. As a nation, they don't believe. But there are many that do believe. Yes, sir. So blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles becoming. Who, who was it talking about? Go to the book of, uh, no, 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 go to the AMPC. Let's read the same verse, the same verse, Romans 11, 25, and the AMPC. I want you to see. Lest ye be self-opinionated, wise in your own conscience, I do not want you to miss this hidden truth and mystery, brethren, or hardening. Insensibility has temporarily befallen a part of Israel to last until the full number of the ingathering of the Gentiles has come in. Until a full number, the full number, until the full number 
of the ingathering of the Gentiles has come in. There is a full number that God's waiting for us to get to. There's a full number of sinners throughout the world that must come to Jesus Christ. There is a definite number of people that must believe in Jesus Christ. That's what he's waiting for. Once that full number is attained, the trumpet will sound. There it is. It's right in the book. The full number of the ingathering of the Gentiles. Oh, glory be to God. He's waiting, he's waiting, he's waiting. Till we win the souls that we're supposed to win. He is waiting. Who knows? When that last man believes. Hallelujah. When is it going to be? And we're preaching the gospel around the world. And you know, we're doing a big time. It's happening everywhere. Remember, just uh, was it a couple of years ago, 2022, something like that. When I told you, we got to reach 7 billion people around the world. And I told you by the spirit, 7 billion. Seven billion. Got to reach. Got to win. We've got to gather them. Look at, look at, look at the number. Not just reaching them. We're reaching that now. We're reaching that number. But we've got to now disciple that number. We've got to get them right in. Not just for them to hear, but for us to bring them in. They have to be born again. Not just haven't heard. I believe we've reached that number as far as hearing is concerned. And even exceeded it. But we have to now have them believe. You see, they've got to hear the gospel and accept it and receive it. Because, look at it, look at it again. Look at that verse again. He says, A hardening insensibility has temporarily befallen a part of Israel to last until the full number of the ingathering of the Gentiles has come in. This is more than hearing the gospel. It's an ingathering. We have to bring them. The harvest. We're talking about the harvest. Glory be to God. Woo, glory, hallelujah. You know, if you're a farmer, the most exciting time of a farmer's life is the harvest time. So these are exciting times as we're winning souls. It's so easy to win souls right now. See, this is the day. This is the day. If you will just open your mouth, the Holy Ghost will put words in your mouth and the power of God will be distributed from you. To your listeners, they will hear the word, they will believe, they will believe. This is the day for winning souls. You have to win souls. You have to. You have to. You have to. The in-gathering. The in-gathering is taking place, it's happening, it's happening big time, it's happening fast. It's happening fast. It's happening fast. Oh. Whew. He said, I'll show you a mystery. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15 from verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. He says, everybody's not going to die. Because you see, we read that scripture. We read that scripture in Isaiah chapter 26, verse 19. All right. And he's telling you, he says, Thy dead men shall live. Together with my dead body shall they arise. All right. Awake and sing, ye that dwell in dust. For thy dew is as the dew of herbs. And the earth shall cast out the dead. The earth shall cast out the dead. They're going to come out.
out of the earth. The earth shall cast out the dead. What? Doesn't matter where they are. They'll come out. Pop out from wherever they are. Earth shall cast out the dead. <laughs> so he tells us, we shall not all die. Everybody's not going to die. You know, some people say, everyone is going to die. I wonder, where did they get it from? Why do they think like that? Who, who, who got them to reason like that? How did they come about that? They say, everybody's going to die. Everybody's going to die. Everybody. But the Bible says everybody's not going to die. Look at it right there. We shall not all sleep. But we shall all be changed. Mm -hmm. All right. You want to read it from the NIV? And then they, they, they amplify it as well. It says, take notice. I tell you a mystery, a secret truth, an event decreed by the hidden purpose or counsel of God. We shall not all fall asleep in death, but we shall all be changed, transformed. That's lovely. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. So go back to that King James and, and look at it. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Look at the next verse. In a moment, it's going to happen in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. As fast as you can, as fast as you just, how fast can you, can you, Twinkle your eye. How? F <laughs> that was fast, right? Very fast. <laughs> Very fast. Very fast. See, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, I told you, it means second trump. I showed it to you from the Bible. It means second trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. The trumpet shall that is going to be powerful. Yes, sir. In a moment, it's going to happen sudden. Some people will be in a taxi cab, in a bus, in a train, driving their cars, on a plane, walking in the street, shopping. Delivering a baby. <laughs> Whatever. But suddenly. Now let's see the description. Go to first, first Thessalonians chapter 4. From verse 13. First Thessalonians chapter 4. It says, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. He says, concerning God's people that have passed on, who have died. Okay? It's, he, he uses the term asleep. Like when Jesus said, Lazarus, Lazarus sleepeth. And they said, Master, that's fine if he's sleeping. He said, I want to go and wake him up. I said, Master, you don't need to wake him up. If he's sleeping, that's fine. Then the master said, I mean, he's dead. Then they said, okay, let's go and die with him. <laughs> <laughs> but I would not that I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again. Even so them also which, uh, which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. That's significant. 
Even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with you. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. <laughs> what a shout. He'll descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. See it now? The dead in Christ shall rise first. I told you there's two trumpets. The first trumpet sounds and it's the dead in Christ who hear that. They rise. The second trumpet follows. And that second one is the last one. And there's going to be a third one, brother. Look. Next verse. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Did you see that? He says, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven. Doesn't mean he's going to have a touchdown. No touchdown. He descends from heaven and remains up there. <laughs> it says, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. We're going to meet him in the air. He'll descend from heaven, but wait in the air. Yes, sir. Then we get out of this place. Yes, sir. And all this will happen in a moment. Twinkling. In the twinkling of an eye. Yes, sir. We are suddenly transformed. Yes. And this body ceases to be terrestrial. Yes, sir. <laughs> You see, it's terrestrial right now. That's why we're standing here. That's why we're sitting here. But suddenly it becomes celestial. And once celestialized, we are gone out of here. Gone. 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 Then Times of London headlines, they are gone. New York Times, they are gone. <laughs> I don't know who are those that will be on the screen on those days. For news. Is it Fox News? Is it CNN? Is it whatever? All of them will be looking for answers and suddenly they will form one media house. All of them will form one media house. All of them. Global News Network. <laughs> GNN. They need answers because some are saying, where have they disappeared to? Where did they disappear to? Because they didn't see us going gradually. It was in a moment. So fast. And we will leave all the trinkets behind. Yes, sir. <laughs> They can use all the credit cards if they want to. Everything. We have no need of them. 
any money that wasn't used for the gospel at that time ah. all the extra xps ah. Church buildings. Yes, sir. All those things. Gone. We're gone. We're gone. Yes. Gone out of this world. My brothers and sisters in Christ, this will happen. Yes, it's going to happen soon. It's going to happen soon. It's gonna happen soon. All right, my family, there you have it with the man of God by person of the man of God, Reverend Dr. Chris. Um, it's gonna really happen soon, and I am hoping, and I'm also, you know, preparing myself. You know, beyond anything, all right, I want you to know something. The fact, you know, beyond the fact that I'm, you know, also bringing the gospel to you through my channel, I try to push and make sure that you guys get aware and be prepared for the rapture of the church, all right. On my own, all right, in my local assembly, I make sure that I am involved in the activities of the church. I'm not just, you know, telling you what I don't do, all right. I am involved in my own local church. So, one of the things you need to do for yourself is that when you're born again, get involved in also winning other people. Otherwise, why will God actually, you know, leave us here after we are born again? All right, is to reach other people. So get involved. There are a lot of people that some of you are born again, but you have you are not in church. That's all right. Find yourself a church, all right, that you can learn the word and also serve, all right, because that's one way. You know, um, the man of God, Pastor Chris, have let us understand that when you meet God. He's going to ask for the souls you actually you want, all right. So that's the more reason you must get involved in your local church and also get involved in the soul winning and bringing others because the faster we preach and push this gospel the more all right um, um you know closer we are to the rapture of the church all right because i am ready i hope you are ready i hope your mom is ready your dad is ready everybody is ready for this video to them let them know let them also listen all right and also get prepared for the rapture of the church all right let it not be that you heard this thing and you took it as a joke or there are some people that will hear it and then begin to criticize. Even in the comment section, you will still see those that after hearing this kind of message, they will still so find something bad somewhere and want to comment. Don't be such. Listen to it and then go and, and put action. If you are not born again, get born again. All right. And then if you are not serving in your local church, make sure you do so. All right. Because that's the way you're going to prepare for, um, you know, the rapture. You can't. You know just stay on your own and be prepared no you got to find somewhere all right don't forsake the garden of ourselves so find yourself in a local church that's one way to prepare guys i really believe you are blessed in today's video and i look forward to seeing my next video don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for those of you coming new to my channel please hit the subscribe button and subscribe guys i'll see you in my next video bye